So, this is part two of the old kitchen backsplash here. And sorry I didn't record the, uh, the upper pieces underneath the cabinet here. We were just short a uh, gimbal holder person to film all this. So, but anyway, um, so you'll notice over here, let's go over here. So you notice we have our upper pieces in right here, and then we did a metal edge detail right here, and then we took our broken scrap tile and did a mosaic inlay with our broken pieces to utilize our scrap tile that we used. And then I think that really sets it off, it gives it pizzazz, right? Is that the word for today? Pizzazz? Pizzazz. Pizzazz. Gives it pizzazz. Rhymes with pizza. Rhymes with pizzazz. <laughs> All right, let's not go there. <laughs> All right, it's so family show. Yeah, it's a family show, right? <laughs> but anyway, um, so we're putting in this this mosaic inlay here, and then come around here. So you can see around the window here, I did some more metal edge detail on this. So this, this metal edge detail, this is that Schluter Curdy metal edge detail right here. So we did, uh, I did square corners on it instead of mitering the uh, end pieces here to a 45. Schluter sells these pieces here and they're like 10 bucks a pop. So ouchie, 10 bucks there, 10 bucks there. You get the idea, adds up quick. Anyway, on this, shelf right here for the window we're going to utilize this countertop material so we're going to special order a, a shelf bump out right here and then the edge of that sh the edge of the shelf will bump out a little bit right here and then that'll cover this detail right here and then we have to be mindful of the faucet and the soap dispenser so we have a faucet that comes up right here, so we can't bump it out too far. So we'll, we'll get that faucet out and then we'll make sure that we're, we're good on our distance for our faucet on that. So that'll take care of that detail right there. So continuing around here, so this is a good uh, detail to point out around your outlets right here. So when you're doing your mosaic, Follow the pattern with your mosaic, but keep keep your box square. Keep your pieces square with your box. And then be mindful of your outlets, anchoring points. So don't cover those up. If you do this type of tile work, just keep in mind you gotta account for your outlet there. Alright, and then my rookie over here that is putting all this fine mosaic inlay into the wall here. Forgot to uh, take out all of this thin set in between his pieces. And then this is what he ended up with. He had to dig it out. So it's okay. That's the best way to learn is by experience. So he won't do that again. Nope. <laughs> no, but you know, he's got all this Thin set that he had to dig out last night while everybody else got to go home and eat pizza and do other things. <laughs> Family show. Family show. <laughs> All right. So, but anyway, no, it turned out really, really good though. John's doing a fantastic job on this for his first time doing mosaic inlay stuff. So, all right. So, if we continue on, you notice. This grout line is open now. Some thin set is dug out. So what he's doing now is he's putting this thin set in between the two border pieces here and put it on, on the wall and he's just gluing his pieces in there. You like that sound effect? <laughs> so the trick is to just you just gotta find pieces that work. Yeah, it's slow and tedious, but you know, if you do it for a while, you get the hang of it. It's not too bad. So the trick is though, is to 
make sure to leave your grout line because that is that's that's the coolness of the mosaic is the grout line effect around all these broken pieces here and then make sure that you glue these pieces in really good that that's really important so make sure your thin set is fresh and don't let it go too long otherwise you're, you're going to be fighting it and pieces are going to be falling out so and then if you have to, you can back butter your little pieces, like what John's doing right now. So he's back buttering his piece right there. Even though he's got thin set on the wall up here, he's back buttering his piece. That way you get a good bond, a good contiguous bond in between those two pieces. You see that? Sticking her right on in there and give her a little wiggle there to let her set. Wiggle it, wiggle it. And then you see how he's using these little triangles? So, you see that detail right there? So these are wedges, little triangle wedges. You can buy in the tile section. Gives you a little spacer there. So, you can buy them in little small bags of 500 or 1 8 inch little triangle spacers. Deep holos, they all carry this stuff. And anyway, it's, it's great for creating voids in your tile. See how he's got them kind of randomly placed in there to keep spacing. Yeah, that's how you do that. Mosaic tiling. So this is live. This is one thing I'd like to point out that we're doing this live. This is not scripted. We're not cut, redo this stuff, this is live. So this is us doing it in the flesh. In the flesh. So, you know, I always like those other YouTube channels that script their stuff and, and then it all turns out perfect, you know, and there's no mistakes ever. No, there's mistakes, there's always mistakes. Even when you've been doing this stuff for years. So. Like that piece, you want to nip it? So let's see here. What I was talking about is nipping tile. So these here are tile nippers. They're not toenail clippers. They're tile nippers. <laughs> yes. And you don't pull nails or teeth with them either. You nip tile. So you literally take a piece of tile and see how I can put these on here and I can nip this piece off right here. So I just squeeze, boom, nip a piece of tile off. So if there's a piece that's kind of close, you can use old school methods here. Tile nippers. They call them nippers because you're just you're just barely biting away at your piece here. Don't go all the way up in here and try and bite off a big chunk. It doesn't work like that. So you want to nip away at it just a little at a time. Nip, nip. Okay. So I don't know. Is that gonna work for you? That's what he says. A little bit more, or you like that? Yeah, that's pretty good. I guess good. I could put a little triangle in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll work. I'll glue her. So that worked, nipping. So, yeah, these things, these are cheap. I don't know. Back in the day, they were five bucks. I think they're like 15 bucks now. But these things are like 30 years old, believe it or not, and I still use them. So if you take care of your tools, take care of your stuff. It'll last a long time. So, all right. And then other methods. What's my mind? What you doing? Nothing. Oh, okay. It's nothing. Nothing. All right. I thought you were like, hey, let me take a break. So. Yeah, this one's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> That's not heavy. I'll give you a workout. Here is two thousands method of nipping tile. <laughs> a grinder and a grinder blade. So, oh, I can't remember where I got this blade, but it, eBay, they, they sell them all over eBay or whatever. 
Um, get your quality blade though. Don't buy a Chinese one if you can avoid it. So trust me, Chinese is one use wonder. You put it on, use it once, and wonder why you did that. <laughs> one use wonder. And then you wonder why you're in the hospital too from the tool falling apart. Anyway, that's enough. I'm ranting. Uh, this grinder blade is it's really cool. So it's got diamond pieces on this side, and then it's got diamond pieces on the front side here, and then diamond pieces around the edge here. What's so cool about that is, is I can take this grinder, I'm not going to do it in here, but I can take this grinder and grind away from this side and or this side. So if I cut in the center of this piece of tile, I can waller it out back and forth like that. I don't have to sit there and flip my tool around, flip my piece, makes it all awkward. So, invaluable tool right here. Grinder is almost a necessity when you do tile. Grinder and a grinding blade. I probably do 90% of my finish work of cleaning my edges up, cutting pieces with this tool right here. All right. All right. So, as we've been talking, you can see how John is continuing on, continuing, continuing, continuing on. Say that fast. <laughs> Looking good. Looking good, yes. So, oh, family show. <laughs> anyway, in real time, um, here's something else to point out on that stuff also. Um, he's using a Anything flat, like a straight edge. Straight edge, yes. Flat surface, straight edge. You need a straight edge. So, as he's placing this tile in there, you need a straight edge to make sure the plane stays even with your other two pieces of tile. So, he just sits there and just pushes his mosaic in place there, squishes them in, make sure the plane is still level. So if I, if I take this, I run this, you know, that's how it's ready. So right there, it's just a bump out a little bit, but it, it's, it's good. That's great, actually. And you see how this piece of tile has a little nick out of it right there. That's okay. Grout will fill that in right there. You'll never see that stuff. So that's the beauty of mosaic. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's, that's the whole idea behind it. It's not perfect. So it's just creative. So if I sit there and randomly put that there, see how those are all flat? Good job, Johnny Layton. Good job. Thank you. I'm a Ronin employee. That's right. Ronin trainee. So, yep. Fantastic. All right. So that's another tip right there. So after you get a few pieces glued into place, get you a, a flat edge, a straight edge, and make sure that those are in place. So you can even use like a, I don't know, another piece of tile to do that if you have a long piece of tile. I think that's what we were using yesterday. I don't know where that piece went. But uh, yeah, you know, if you have a straight edge piece of tile, you don't even have to have a tool. You can just use a piece of tile. And just as long as your tile can span across your border here and touch the upper tile and the lower tile piece. if you want the flush look, you use one of these. If you don't care about the flush look, it, which is perfectly acceptable, 
put your pieces in there and just let them float at different levels. So, and you can see it takes a little while, so it's not not quick when you're doing those eggs. Slow and steady wins the race, but the end result is this is a conversational piece when people walk in here they're gonna wow look at that look at that mosaic right there they're gonna they're not gonna see the usb outlet right here they're gonna look at the mosaic <laughs> that's a running joke by the way so all my rentals i put a usb outlet in the kitchen and that's what sells the rentals like oh yeah you got usb outlets i'm written from you sorry Yes, sold, or sold, right, if you're selling the place. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyway, this is how this is turning out right here. And then, one other thing I forgot to point out. I was late showing up to the job site today. It's my fault. I was running late. And I was going to show you all how we did the upper. So, these are called ledger boards, okay? And Chad, point kind of got one example right there. Oh, Chad, you've got great eyes. So this ledger board, and this is a ledger board also in use. Yes. So what happens when you have a span and you have tile pieces that are wet and you keep them sliding down? You put in what's called a ledger board. Okay, give it some stability. So you put these ledger boards in. And then it keeps the tile from sliding down. That's what we did on the upper part also. So before we did this inlay, we had ledger boards right here. And then usually you can find your studs by an outlet right here. So once you find your stud, you know, it's every 16 inches in theory. Not everybody can measure 16 inches. So <laughs> anyway, that's how we did that. So we put these ledger boards up. All right, and that's how we held these tiles in place, the upper row. So we did these ledger boards. So I had to put a ledger board up here, of course, to hold all this in place. Ledger board, just scrap material, just southern straight scrap material. So this was scrap left over from our window casings that we were doing in this, in this house on this project. So we utilized our scrap material wisely. Uh, anything long and straight. So, ledger boards. All right. And then, as you can see up here, so, uh, what happened to my hammer? I'm trying to find my hammer. My rubber mount. Did you put the rubber mount? It's cool? still downstairs on the orange one. No, the black, the black. It's a wooden handle with a black face, black mallet. Yeah, should be in the tool chest. But anyway, I want to point out so these these tile spacers that I use right here. Uh, so come closer, Mom. Look at this detail. So these tile spacers that I use, I, I like these. They're, they're a T-spacer, right? So the bottom goes underneath the tile and it sets your depth off the wall for your thin set. And then this piece, your, your tile gets placed under here, just like in the wall here. So this T is actually underneath this tile here, okay? And then I use these little triangle wedges, triangle wedges. And then slide them in there and it gives it tension and it creates an even plane so there's no lippage on this tile. So these are really critical to use. No lippage. That's what you want, no lippage. So see how I can take that and no lippage. Okay. Smooth. Yeah. Smooth. Just like Garrison Brothers. Nice and smooth. Yeah, we need a... That's another running joke there, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Brought to you by. Brought to you by. Laguna Madre, Garrison Brothers. The whiskey bourbon, or whiskey bourbon, what? The bourbon of Texas. All right. Here is just a rubber mallet, just a basic rubber mallet, okay? So don't, you know, this tile is strong. Don't think you're going to break it if you actually only miss these. Is this stuff strong? So this is what we use to break out our little spacers here. So break it down. Just take it and just tap it. And it breaks them off. So just like that. Just like that. <laughs> right. Okay. Here we go. No. Bam. It's electric. It's electric. Woogie woogie. Just like that. So again. Fast way to do that, just break them out. Okay. And then the cleanup crew will get them off the floor. Oh, wait, that's me. <laughs> All right. So they just break out just like that. Just like that, they're all gone magically. See, you can break something and have fun doing it. <laughs> all right. So that covers tile spacers, uh, and you see how far John's gotten since we have been talking. So he's just about over to his outlet now. So check that out. Go ahead, Miles. Get in there. Let's see that detail. He is cruising. <laughs> Leave me alone. Bro. Man, he is blazing new trails over there. <laughs> In the zone. <laughs> the tile zone. <laughs> Chad, you didn't get the memo today. What memo? Memo. Of? Orange? Yeah, today is High, high Viz Sunday. <laughs> oh, I missed it. I want high vis yesterday. High vis Sunday. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think. Can't find the piece. So, question. Audience, question. How how did we what do we how do we break this tile? What's a good way to do that? Good question. We get to break some more stuff and have fun doing it. No. All right. We got a piece of towel that we want to break. You need more pieces, or you think you got enough? I well, got plenty, but got plenty. You want to go downstairs? Is there some? You need demo. You know what? We've got some of that uh, old tile from the bathroom. Yeah, just grab a piece of that, and then uh, show us another piece of that. It should be underneath the uh, makeshift bench down there on the wall. So how do we break this up? Well, before we do that, let's talk about if you all scrap pieces. Yeah, scrap pieces are fine. Like yeah, that'll work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had yeah, that's right. We had two of those, two or three of those left. That'll work. So let's do that first. Let's, let's break tile first. So here's some of our scrap left over. All right. So how do I break this? Well, on the floor. Get you some cardboard. If you don't have cardboard, what's my camera going to do on here? So get you some cardboard. You can usually use the box that your tile came in. This is the leftover box pieces that, that this tile came in. Um, if you don't have cardboard, you can always use a towel. So you can wrap your tile in towels. Towels or cardboard. So. All right. So on the floor here, 
I'm going to put my cardboard down. I'm going to put my tile down. I'm just going to go ahead and put this towel over the top of it. And then you can either use a mallet, hammer, or what else? Would, what would we you got to do? We got a dead blow hammer up there. You want to cut oh. all spectrums? Look at that. <laughs> This is a, why is this called a dead blow hammer? Because it is filled with lead shot. So after you hit your subject with it, they're dead after the blow? Right, <laughs> and it won't bounce back. It's oh. the name dead blow. Oh, okay, it's not a bouncy. No, so. it's a. So what Chad, Chad is saying here, when you, hit, when you use this hammer, it'll bounce up. This hammer, oh my God. See how it just magically wants to stick to its subject? <laughs> Kinetic energy. All right, so oh, let's try this dead blow. Let's see what kind of results we get. So look at that. Oh yeah. Man. All right. Look at that, people. Ooh, that turned out some cool results actually. These are cool pieces. These are hard to do. Sharp pieces. I like those pieces. Do. Here's some pointy ones. That's good question. Yes, yes, yes. Same same tile. Yeah, it's the same stuff. All right. No, it's not. It's not, is it? Mm -mm. Where'd you find that scrap at? But that would look cool though. It's a little blend. Anybody by the door? All right. So. Lessons learned here, everyone. We had somebody go grab some tile, and it wasn't the same color. <laughs> Don't you love how this is not scripted? It's in real time right here. So, pay attention. But anyway, you get the idea, right? Take a towel and a hammer and... Give her hell, everyone. This was demonstration purposes only. Demonstration purposes only. You see how this is working out, right? Let's see what kind of results the metal framing hammer does. See, it's a little bit more precise. You get a different result with this one. Oop. Or nothing at all. See how tough that tile is? Isn't that amazing? Another reason why we use this towel is so little fragments don't just blow all over the place. Caution, sharp edges. Yeah, and then eye protection is paramount on this stuff, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> Chad's over there covering his eyes. <laughs> so, oh yeah, see that? That turned out great. Anyway, you see how you have different results when you use different tile hammers, and then Let's say if I turn this around and use it as a cause, see, I get a different result. Plus, you know, cut your towel, so you'll damage that real quick. So you get a different result. All right? You can turn it like this if you wanted to. This, this. You get the idea. You didn't cover ball peen. That could be. Ooh, a ball peen, that could give a good result. Yep. So a ball peen hammer has a like a point to it, right? You have one? Let me ball peen. So Chad's gonna go run and see if he can find a ball peen. But anyway, ball peen hammer. How would you describe a ball peen hammer, Johnny? It has a point to it? Well, it's got a round edge for making like dents. For making dents? Yeah, yeah. one end that's round. Yeah. It's like a curving metal. I guess you would form it in metal. Yeah. So it has a precision point on it, so you would get a better result probably when you hit this tile when you have a point versus a flat. So see how I'm doing that with a flat, it's not really breaking. If you have a point on here, you get a better result. So Chad's gonna go around and see if he can find a ball peen hammer. Yeah. And anyway, you see. How we do that? So take a take a towel and some cardboard so you don't damage your floor underneath, and then negative. Negative. So Chad did not have a ball peen, but we had a good description of what a ball peen hammer is. So 
All right, there you go. What else can I cover right now? That's about it, probably on this one. So, Maj, what you, what you looking at over there? The floor? <laughs> I love my camera girl. <laughs> All right, so, tiling the mosaic. The last piece of gluing pieces before we grout this stuff. So, probably let this set up for a couple days. I'd say at least two days minimum. Uh, let this set up before you start grouting. Because during the drying process, there's water that's evaporating. And then those tile pieces are actually falling in to the wall, sucking into the wall as the water evaporates, so it's actually moving. So you don't want to grout that stuff and then have cracks in your grout line. And then something else that I wanted to cover, if you're not comfortable mixing your own thin set, it looks like you mixed that stuff this morning, so mix it. So they mixed up their own batch. We, have, we, we buy bags of it. It's just more economical to do it that way. If, if you're, uh, if you if you can do that, if you're comfortable doing that, you have tools to do that, mix it. So it's not necessarily. And then if you if you're not comfortable mixing, uh, make sure that you buy thin set according to your tile application. So in this case, since we're just doing these little pieces, this particular thin set is Type One from Moppy, and it can hold up to a 12 by 12 tile. So 12 inches by 12 inches, square piece of tile. So type two can go uh, much larger than that. And that's when you get into your LFT, it'll say LFT on the uh, can, large format tile. Uh, so in this case, uh, this, this little uh, container of mapping is just perfect for this application. If, if you don't want to mix your, your, your thin set, your glue, your adhesive, um, you can open this up, get you a spatula or a margin trowel. So John's over there using a margin trowel. That's what a margin trowel is. So you take your margin trowel or even a putty knife. So uh, that's another tool to use to glue your tile pieces is a putty knife. So, but you know, we have these tools, so we do this a lot. Uh, glue your pieces. One by one. Um, I don't know. What else? Anything oh, else? Your little edge detail, the metal. Yeah, we did that. Pointed that out this morning. The edge detail, and then the corner pieces here, mm -hmm. and then the edge detail. So there's another edge detail over here by the refrigerator. So you can see how that's in. Mind you, get a close up of that. That edge detail in there, so you can see. Get closer. Closer. Now that's close, that's good. So you see that metal edge and you see right here where my finger's at. So you can see the thin set right there, gluing that stuff in. So there's, there's two methods to put this in. Uh, the method I chose on this one right here was to go ahead and actively glue it underneath my pieces. Um, beforehand and then if you don't want to do that you can leave thin set away from your tile pieces before you put put your metal edge detail in here just try not to put thin set underneath this area of course you see how wide this metal edge detail is and then let's say that you get some glue behind here um, we have a previous video that shows how to use a multi-tool. You can use a multi-tool to grind out the dried thin set behind this tile. So that's another way to do that. And then you can uh, take thin set and then squish some thin set underneath your tile pieces and then take a rubber mallet and pound this in place right here underneath your tile after the fact. But I actively glued those in place um, as I was setting those tiles, so made it made it easier to uh, do that post. I don't know instead of using a 
multi-tool. So thank you who's never logged in right now. So I see there's somebody logged in watching this. So I'm trying to do these regularly on the weekends. So do a live uh, construction segment, no matter if it's tiling, uh, trim on windows, putting windows in, hardwood flooring, anything construction related. So thanks for logging in. And then this is Chad. So you'll see Chad in a lot of our videos too. So Chad's just the cabinet guy, but he does a lot more than just cabinets. So, and then we have John here. So he's the banker. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we turned the banker into a Tyler. So, but uh, anyway, no, uh, we have fun doing this and then I'm trying to grow the channel. So you'll see us a lot on here. Oh, anything, everything about construction, rental properties, maintenance on that, on rental properties, uh, just anything construction related in the construction world. Um, that's what we try and do. But this segment is is a live piece on us tiling the mosaic right here. So since we've been talking, you can see how far John's gotten. So mine's coming here. Let's get a little bit closer. So my. I'm slow. My camera operator is learning a gimbal, so be patient, everyone. But anyway, you see this tile mosaic going in uh, in between our, our two tile runners here. So you can see how he's got the thin set on the wall. He puts his thin set up there on the wall first, and he's, he's fishing through all this, this sea of broken tile on the counters here. So we've got a sea of tile over here and a sea of tile over here, just, just random pieces. Uh, as you can see, this is not scripted. This is real. This is live. This is this is the real deal. So this stuff is it's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would do it, right? They hit the easy button. Well, all right. Uh, what else do I want to show? So here's something else that's good for tile work. Um, you need you a good sponge. So for cleaning up excess thin set and scraping off thin set. So I like these sponges. So this sponge has a handle. That's kind of nice, right? It's got a handle to it. And then it's got a little scrubby fiber pad on the bottom there, a Brillo pad on the bottom. Uh, for those that do dishes or very familiar with a pad like this. <laughs> Anybody around here do dishes? <laughs> no. No. Nobody does dishes around here. It's a washer. Yeah. We got a dishwasher, right? And plates. Oh yeah, dishwasher. Oh yeah, paper plates. There you go. Man, what a novelty, huh? Paper plates. High on the That's right. To the environment. That's right. Burn them. <laughs> you got it. All right, so anyway, uh, I like sponges like this because you can, but it's nice to where you can get in here and then as you're wiping your tile down, see how it kind of scrubs the thin set off too? See that? I'm getting in there, it's just scrubbing the thin set right off. So, you got to get in there and scrub all that thin set off. So, John glued these yesterday. Should be okay. We'll test the uh, holding ability of this tile work here. Yeah, holds pretty good. And then you can see how that thin set's scrubbing off there. It's not easy. You just gotta keep at it. Not too much water though, that's the key. You put too much water on your pad and you let water get in behind in, in behind your freshly set tile, it'll compromise the thin set and the adhesiveness of it and it'll make it weak. So no running water, just moist, that's it. Alright. So see yeah. how washing each piece of tile. And then what do we got here? Any fence set up here? A little piece of fence set up here. Not that it matters behind here because the microwave is gonna go up here. It's gonna hide all this. 
So just get you a nice sponge with the uh, the Brillo on the bottom there, and then clean your the face of your tile. Scrub all that real good. Get that thin set off there, because you want a nice clean faced tile before you do your grout. That's very important. This stuff needs to be really, really clean, smooth, no thin set, no glue. Get it really, really clean. Okay. And yes, this, this does fragment and build up in there, but it'll, it'll wipe right off. So you want to clean all that thin set off there. Be careful around your outlets and get water on that stuff. All right. All right. So, really important to get all that clean. I'm like a broken record. How many times have I said that? I want to hear it again. Cleanliness is like what? Godliness? Like yeah, a clean construction site that's really important. That's right. So trip hazards. Trip hazards, yeah. So make sure your construction site's clean too. Efficiency. Efficiency, yes. Yeah, that's a great word, efficiency. Where did you learn that word? <laughs> I have never seen anything that's efficient yet. <laughs> Except for this crew right here. <laughs> efficient. That's right. Speaking of efficiency, did you fish yesterday? I did. You, you did? What did you catch? I catch crappie. I catch cop crappie. You caught crappie. <laughs> I catch crappie. <laughs> nice. How many crappie did you catch? I caught 11. You caught 11. Nice. How many did you keep? Oh, I kept 11. I caught <laughs> a lot. Caught a lot, caught a lot, caught a lot. Caught a lot, nice. Well, cool, crappie. Yeah, that's a good eating. That's good fish. I like crappie. Anybody else like crappie? Thumbs up on crappie? <laughs> fillets. Fillets? Yes, fillets. All right. We're on tangent. So, one last time, right here. You can see where John's at right now. So it's taken a little while, but he's, he's trying to be very meticulous though, you know. So I gotta look at it the rest of my life. Yes, this is his house, so we were working on John's house. So yeah, he does have to look at it the rest of his life. Yep. So he's, well, you would, you would uh, put that detail in another property though. It doesn't, it's not necessarily your property, but you're just detail oriented in, in general. So yeah, you want it to be nice, look nice and give that wow factor. Wow. Wow. Yeah. When people walk in here, they're going to go, wow. Yes. Dang, who did all that? <laughs> wow. So we like, Wow, whoever the poor sucker that did that, mm -hmm. I feel sorry for that guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. So, as you can see, it's, it's slow. And, you know, just gotta find your pieces. Your buffet of broken tile, the buffet of broken tile. Go with that. All right. Do we still have a watcher? We do. Hi, watcher. Hi, viewer. So, thanks for logging in this morning on a Sunday, wherever you are in this great big wide world. <laughs> Need a little glue. All right. So, anyway, tell us your tiling stories, your tiling horror stories, or. Just if you have any tiling questions in general, just, just let us know. And I'll try and answer those to the best of my knowledge and experience. Uh, appreciate everyone logging in this morning, though. And 
Yeah, that's it. This is it. Real time, not scripted. So, uh, please consider subscribing. Those that watch this after the fact, after the live stream, please consider subscribing. Uh, that would be awesome. And then give us a thumbs up. Uh, ring that bell. Uh, what else? I don't know. I'm really not good at this, as you can tell. No. Um, but anyway. Uh, comment. Yes, comment. Yes, comments are great. Hey, positive comments, negative comments, we'll take them. I'll take anything I can get with 62 subscribers. So. <laughs> All right, peace, everyone, and then uh, stay tuned. So next weekend, I think our plan is to grout this. I don't know, Chad, you're not going to be here, are you? I will not be here. You're going to be at Branson, Branson, Missouri, for those that are watching. So have you ever been to Branson, Missouri? Um, that's like a little miniature Missouri Vegas. <laughs> Dolly Parton. Yes, Dolly Parton. All right, but anyway, next weekend... Um, we're gonna try and grout this, so that's the plan, right, John? Is that the plan? So uh, right. that's the plan. So if you want to watch us grout this, great. Um, Saturday or Sunday, we plan on doing this. So if not, if you don't catch us live, you can catch the replay of it. So it'll be posted on YouTube. So appreciate it. And then um, we have more projects in the works. So we have a master bathroom that we're getting ready to tackle. So we're gonna tear it out and. Uh, bring it back to life with new product into the 2000s. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, handrails and, and spindles. spindles that we're gonna set. So we'll, we'll film that one. We'll probably do that one in two weeks. So when Chad gets back, it'll be both of us working on that one. So we'll ex explain the spacing of the spindles and different fastening techniques. So the fastening techniques that we're gonna use on that. So. We'll discuss that. But anyway, I'm rambling and peace. So enjoy your day, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. All right. Thank Take you. Take care. Take care. Happy health. So you had a guy live watching us? So, yeah. So you hit the X.